Yeah. Now call the city council special meeting to work. Authorize the invocation and pledge of allegiance. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have a roll call. Council Member Frank here. Council Member Johnson here. Council Member Sutton here. Thank you, Mayor Bernard. Here. Mayor Anderson. Here. Yeah, All right. Is uh, Melody going to be with you? She's on Zoom. Oh. Melody, take it away. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Loud and clear. Okay, thank you for allowing me to participate virtually this evening. Um, we've had a little episode of COVID here, so. Um, the purpose of this evening's meeting is to discuss the infrastructure funds and the CRA funds. Um, David, I can't see the, the slide presentation, but if you go to slide number two, where it shows the infrastructure fund revenues. Yes, yes. Okay, so y'all can see that? Yes, yes. Okay. Oops. So for the purpose of the revenues as they're presenting today for the infrastructure fund, um, we are looking at a revenue coming in of $973,850,000, which is a decrease from last year of 121, I'm sorry, $126,150. Um, as you may or may not be aware, we enter into a uh, interlocal agreement with Highlands County, um, and it's based on the local option gas taxes that are collected. Um, this year, our um, percentage declined due to the fact that we have um, our 2020 audit has not yet been submitted. It's potentially going to cost us um, $150,000 annually over the next five years. I ask you a question? Yes, sir. You're, you're saying because it didn't do the audit properly in the next five years, it's going to cost us $100,000 a year? So not that the audit wasn't done correctly. The audit has not been submitted to the state of Florida. And okay. the county, every five years, the interlocal agreement is um, um, redone. And this year, they would base it on the, the last five years. So we're missing one year. Um, in the calculation that they did for the percentage. So yes, sir, it's going to be approximately 150,000 for the next five years. Uh, thanks, I understand. Would it not be possible to do a one-year interlocal agreement or simply re-up it? Um, I would, it would be something that we would have to contact Highlands County and, you know, maybe they'll work with us once I, we get our audit submitted. You know, maybe they will um, redo the interlocal agreement. We'd have to check with them. Do you know if that's the purview of the commissioners or if that's a state statute? That's the commissioners. Okay. I'm sure they will be amenable. I'm hoping they will. Oh, whether they know it yet or not. Exactly. I have a question. So okay. So if you say the state for the cost of this means that we were going to lose $150,000 for the next five years in revenue instead of us paying it. Now, when you say cost, and I'm not going to go to something I have to pay out. So, if cost, I understand, cost, 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 cost revenue. Cost revenue. Yeah, so just money that's not going to be going into the account. Gotcha. Okay. I got you. Lose the Melody. revenue. Melody, this is yes. the one that we just had on the last agenda. Yeah, we covered them. Remember that. Okay. That's correct. 
Okay, any other questions on the slide number two? Okay, David, if you go to the next slide. So this is to show you, the next slide will show you our projected balance um, for uh, the end of fiscal year 2022. Um, seems how we don't have the audit, the beginning balance um, is a little hard to project. So please understand that these numbers are just estimates. Um, so the projected balance at the end of 21 is going to be approximately $5.6 million dollars with revenues coming in at about 973,000 and estimated expenses at 1.1 million for the year, which would leave us a unreserved balance at the end of 2022 of 5.4 million. So we have plenty of uh, funding and reserves. Okay. The next slides are going to show you um, what staff has requested to be spent out of those funds. Uh, just one question on the uh, city hall roof. Is that uh, just for a roof or is there more in that? I think Mark, I think that may be a question for you. We've got money in there. If you see um, this year, we're going to redo the, the windows um, on the second floor. But in talking with Mark, we believe that the 100,000 will cover more than just the windows on the second floor. Um, so I believe, Mark, correct me if, we're, if I'm wrong, but we'll be doing potentially all of the windows at City Hall. No, but I'll cover that, but I didn't hear what you asked me. Yeah, I was asking about the roof. So in the year 2022, you've got City Hall new roof there at 100,000. I was just curious if that was just a ballpark guess of what the actual roof would cost or if there's other things in that, like the insulation package or new No, insulation. that's just a ballpark to, to have it in there because we've had problems with it again, so it's going to have to be replaced. Okay. And to, to cover what um, Melody was saying, the 2021, as you know, we had the money in there for the second story window. We went out to RFP twice. One time we got one. You rightfully so turned it down. It was 82000 and people there that they put in that called me and asked me what, what um, uh, floor we were even talking about on these windows. We went out again, we got no bids, but we just went out last week again on it. And the other 25, actually council member Sutherland's on here. She was, when she was helping um, Mike Stone um, making the front of the um, uh, city hall look better, look good. They put the plants in, and if anybody hasn't seen it, it seems to look good. We're going to demolish it probably tomorrow. Um, she went around with Mike and saw the windows, and whoever did the first door um, floor windows probably didn't do it the way they should have done it. And look at it, they don't need to be instructed to see it. So we're going to get some um, quotes for that and see if we can get those done. So that'll probably take the other 25. But, but to answer your question, yes, it was for the roof, and it's ballpark at this point. All right. Okay, next slide. The next slide will be your police infrastructure um, fund, the projected balance. Oh, I don't think, I think we use that every year. I apologize for that. Um, I'm gonna have to look, but this year we the, put it. According to the, the um, since 2012, when the, the uh, city went with the sheriff's office for their law enforcement was thirty thousand dollars a year. That's where it came out. This hundred sixty-eight, eight thirty is the figure the sheriff's office gave us for the upcoming agreement, which um, I just received. Went through it, got back to the city attorney or the uh, sheriff's office attorney on some things, and I gave it to Jerry. Jerry looked at it over the weekend, and him and I are going to talk about it on Wednesday. But that's what that money is for us. The vehicles are asking for for this coming fiscal year in agreement. So that's basically they're asking for a four hundred and fifty thousand percent increase or four hundred and fifty percent increase of vehicles in what uh almost nine, ten years of thirty thousand. Now they want to go to one sixty-five. Uh, seems a little bit extreme to me, but I know we can talk about that some more when it comes to the contract overall. That's a huge increase, four hundred and fifty percent in one year. We'll probably come back next year too. 
Is that simple explanation correct there, Melody, that uh, they are basically just going from 30,000 to 165? Yeah, so the 30,000 was for one vehicle, I believe, per the contract per year. This year, of course, we, you know, in the negotiations, we are, um, I believe it's four vehicles that they're going to purchase, Mark. I, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, so that number will go up. That's the number based on the number of vehicles they want to purchase this year. I think. Obviously, we don't have an actual agreement yet, so that's all sort of pie in the sky at this point. Right. Yes. Moving targets. Okay. Number six. Okay, slide number six is the fire department. Um, and there's an item in here for the brush truck that is incorrect. That number should actually be for the year 2022. That should be added. Um, to the capital improvement plan for fiscal year 23. I'm not sure if Chief Marcy's there to discuss the items that are on here. He is. Yep, I'm here. That number, so the dollar amount is also uh, like, uh, I don't know if that's it, but it, so we took the brush truck in a couple of years ago. We're roughly 175000 At that point, it's sort of guessed because it's three years in the future. We've gotten closer. And we think that truck is more like two point. So I asked her to add forty thousand to that one seventy five. But I think she just, you know, clarity did it or just put forty to remove the one seventy five. And and it shouldn't be in, in here. It's for the following fiscal year 22, 23. It's our NCFP. So you can just take that right out there. Okay. So the one thirteen is the total. Chief, you want to cover your seeing that isn't in it, that being that out in the new fire chief command vehicle? Sure. So <laughs> currently, I drive a, it's a nine year old Durango, the Star Man Police Star. Uh, it still runs, it's got some problems, but the uh, idea is to just play for the future. This is a response vehicle that drives to accidents, fires, and nothing else. Um, so the plan is just to get a better, quick, better, visible vehicle. Okay. So 62 is a high number, I know, but in, it's in the future. You know, I'm trying to plan better for this and pick a number of this. But I'm not going to come back next year and say anything. And we'll right now, as you know, are kind of going through the roof. Right. And to add to that, just not a vehicle to drive to and from like you. He currently has this would be set up actually as a command vehicle. So when the big incident, um, you may have seen them on TV or if you've been in a big city where usually it's almost a suburban that pulls up and they can pull out the back and act as a command post. So, um, all right, so it's going to go through me. I'm going to drive home. So, give it to me. So, well, well, that's all for everybody. But I, just making a point, it really isn't just another vehicle. The one he has currently really isn't a command vehicle. It's to and from home. Yeah. What's going to happen then? Because, yeah. The one that you have, Nike. We, we, we will have. use it. Um, we don't have enough vehicles now for people to. The, the one I was supposed to be driving, I gave to Rick Whalen, and it's fine. I just didn't drive my POD, but we don't have enough vehicles now. So that would be that, or another vehicle would be used for city staff to run around because right now, to, to make the, the bank drops, they have to borrow a um, code enforcement vehicle, which has a Probably next week will be the new code enforcement office will be using it. So we don't have enough vehicles. So it will be utilized. We still have some um, years and miles left. And it will be retired to light duty. What happens to the, um, the um, that hybrid vehicle? That we have? No, we have a no, we car. Yes, somebody was traded in for an F-150. I think that was what two years ago? Yeah, 2018. Yeah. Okay. So City Hall has no vehicles now. No. This command post vehicle, you say it would act, it would be in like an SUV or something like that. Or? Yeah, right now it's it's spec as a truck, which is a little more than an SUV. I just kind of went in and, and, and picked out what was really good. You know, this would be a good number, a reasonable number that can work. SUV, I think, is a little cheaper, but this is the budget right now. So whatever number you give me, I'll work off of that. 
Okay. Obviously, we'll be approving the actual purchase order whenever that comes along. Right. Yes. Okay. The uh, the roof replacement and the stucco repair. Is, so uh, the roof replacement is that on the the main roof there or? Yeah, that's on the bay where we park the fire trucks. That's okay. still in that grant that we're working on, and we're getting closer and closer every day to that grant. Yeah, we've a year now. We're still working on it. Right. Um, we're getting now to where they're requesting stuff more frequently, and one of the papers that was sent had a start date projected of like September 2021. Mm -hmm. So I feel like we're getting close to something that can start, but that's still in the grant. So we won't we won't technically be coming as far, but we're leaving it there because we technically haven't done a piece of it. We have a intent to award letter, but we don't have an award letter yet. Got it. Yep. Well, again, that's in this year's budget. So unless we need to carry it over, it won't be carried over. It's just staying in five of the almost sure. six main. The, uh, the fire hydrant replacement, you got 45 grand there. Um, I'm assuming that's more than one fire hydrant. Yes, yeah. each, each fire hydrant they're saying is around 5,000 to place. I see. We actually annex a bunch of stuff on 27 that we don't have sufficient hydrant coverage for. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what these next couple of years, this year we're trying to get some done. I think they don't have enough manpower to really do that. Right. They're trying to spend some of that forty-five thousand at the end of the year, and I know this forty-five thousand is next year to try to do a bunch more. But we have some properties that, when we, <coughs> if we have to connect to a hydrant, it will go completely across Frontage Road on Sun Lakes and also completely across Highway Twenty-Seven, I see. which is not in there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any other questions on slide six? Nope. Seven. Okay, slide seven is uh, your streets department. Basically, these are rolled um, continuously year after year. Street improvements, 300,000. Sidewalks and curbs, 100,000. And stormwater and drainage, 100,000. Do we have a priority list for 2022 street improvement uh, listing for the 300,000? No. No, not yet. Will one be developed? Yes. Just pick and choose. No, we'll do the same as we did this year. We'll come to you with a list of the ones that um, David Roberts believes are the ones that need it the most. I actually think that maybe we could increase that for next year because our streets are continually, you know, deteriorating. And if we're just going to do a half a dozen a year, we're never going to get caught up. So I, I think we ought to add, add something to that. That's a good point. I was going to ask if you may want to up the now whether EPI can keep up with the work we're giving, but again, if we don't use it, it goes stays in the pub. Oh, well, yeah. that and, and the stormwater drainage problem too. And also, I think one of the things that could help us out is we know that there are some type of infrastructure bills being passed up there in Congress that okay. maybe some of that money will eventually come down to uh, our city because. Uh, they usually look at uh, smaller cities sometimes that need the help instead of a bigger city. So maybe we could get some help there, but I think we definitely need to add some money to, I would go with the streets and, and the stormwater drains. If anybody has an opinion on the sidewalks, go ahead. But I'd like to see at least 50,000 added each one of those. I guess opinion. the question would be, uh, obviously, you know, for budgeting, it's not particularly important that we have a particular project in mind. I would just have two questions. Number one, what does the city actually need? You know, do we have a list of all the streets? Is that sort of, uh, I know that at one time, uh, you know, police officers were given the uh, streets department tips on, hey, this road might need some work, et cetera, et cetera. And they had kind of a rolling list. With all the turnover that we've had over the recent years, I would highly doubt that, that list exists or is accurate. So perhaps that might be a better way to go is to actually get kind of an inventory of, a rough idea of what we need. I mean, it could be 50,000, it could be 5 million. Yeah. And it, if it is a lot higher number, it might be more beneficial for us to inflate this number for the sake of getting grants. I know that if it's not yeah. in your capital improvement plan, a lot of times you're not yeah. going to get awarded. So no, no, we I'm might want to, like you're saying, be more aggressive. Yeah. I would just simply say, is that all that crap to say, maybe we should do more than 50,000? <laughs> well, I, I agree with you. I just want to throw out, we need something. And I think that. I believe that there were some streets on the list this year we didn't get to. So we know there's some out there that need to be worked on 
soon. Yeah. And we know there's got there has to be more. So I, I'm willing to go with whatever uh, the rest of the council wants to go with as far as uh, addition to those amounts. Before we uh, put a specific amount, there's two things that I would like to see. And the first thing is that that a percentage be spent on the south side of town, because I do know that there uh, there were streets that on the south side that did not get done. Um, that really, really, that's in need and dire. And I know that the uh, the gentleman that does the evaluation is doing his best, but you explained that to me before. But to be all fairness to all of our citizens and in our park, I do think that would be a, a more reasonable way of uh, spreading the funds out. And I know I agree with you too, Jim. There should be more in in the um, in this budget. Okay. My second thought is that the uh, there was some a uh, grant that the uh, finance director and, and told us about last year that I mean that our last meeting that we could be getting. Uh, and we didn't ask for that grant. Could some of that funds be used for this project? You're talking about the American Rescue Plan? Yeah, that, that's, that's what she's talking yes. about. No. Um, I Right now, um, I believe that the big thing that they're pushing for is water and wastewater infrastructure. I'm not sure if streets are um, in there. I'm in the process of creating a document that's detailing um, more of the things that they're allowing and hopefully I'll have that to present to you guys at the next council meeting. Um, so we have a little more uh, information, but that's a, they're constantly updating that. Um, and I don't, I'm not sure if streets are in there. Council member Gray, I'll have to get back with you on that. One of the the deadline for all of the submittals for that is next month. And typically most engineers are already working on that. And yes, it is um, infrastructure, not necessarily hardscape, but one thing for sure is a couple of years ago, we talked about stormwater assessments, and that is something that everyone is affected by in terms of stormwater. And it might behoove us to look into an assessment in the future to help offset some of these drainage problems, which cause the problems on the roads themselves. But in terms of the ARP, the American Rescue Plan, there's 140 million in there. And right now, Anyone that has a um, shovel ready project is eligible to go ahead and submit. But otherwise, if Corbett is still working on our mitigation hardscape stuff or the grants that he was working on, then he should be aware of any funding for any street improvements. But I doubt, like um, um, Ms. Sauerhofer just said, I don't believe it's for actual streets. It's just for infrastructure for sewers and old pipes being replaced and things like that. Or if a street has to be ripped up and replaced to replace a pipe? <laughs> Probably. Question, question mark? Okay. Obviously staff give him a call and uh, flush this out sooner rather than later. Like uh, Brenda was saying with the, um, the streets that we have not gotten to in prior years, obviously makes a lot of sense to get to those first so that'd be my first place to check for a priority list is what hasn't been accomplished already in the past several years. And as far as a number to add to this, do we have a suggestion? I would probably lean more towards adding another 200,000 to it. To oh. each one or the so, yeah, for, 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 each, for each year in the uh, streets. Yeah, I, I agree. That sounds more reasonable. I agree with you. And, and Mayor, I'm going to ask a question. When we're talking about, and when we're talking about improving the streets and and we're looking at 21 and 22 and 23 or 20 or 19 or whatever to pass by. Mm -hmm. And we're putting this list together. Mm -hmm. Are we always starting with the same one and going down and always missing? Because I don't ever see too many improvements on some of the streets. And I know they're horrible yeah. on the south side. So, well, who, so who's the person gathering the, these the, re the reality is, you know, in order to redo a street, like we just did redo the street over there close to back right? And went from Main Street just past back there. Okay. That project was a couple hundred thousand dollars. Okay. On one little piece of a road. Yep. So in order for you to actually have enough streets getting done to notice, mm -hmm. I mean you're you're talking about millions of dollars probably. So what's right and what's wrong, I don't know, but I know that it needs a substantial amount of money in order to actually fix the thing that's stuck on there. And you know, some of the things may be able to be refinished with resurfacing a road rather than actually grinding it down and redoing which is cheaper, but it's still extraordinarily expensive, particularly right now because all the contractors have more work than they want. Yeah. 
the price of materials is most of the time double or triple what it was. So. Mark, if, if I can interject, um, a couple of months ago, we talked about that little road that the garbage trucks use between Pine and Main Street that is um, just on the block to the east of City Hall. And you all were going to get back with us on ownership of that. And I don't know if there's a right of way or anything back there, but that dirt road just gets all ucky and mucky. And I don't know if we're going to keep driving on it. Are we going to end up being responsible for it with our garbage trucks? It's private property. Then if it's private property, should we be driving on it? No. That means that they would have to bring the garbage cans out further to, so to our streets? They have to bring out the front, yes. Okay. So I, I don't think that we need a motion to adjust these numbers. Yeah. No, just what you wanted 500 put in streets improvements and roads. What what else could you? Uh, just for 500 for each year for the next year. 500 each year for the street improvements? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyone opposed to that? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it's at 300 now. So we want carried forward in the CIP for all five years. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. Okay, very good. And to Danielle's question of the uh, stormwater and drainage, you want to add to that? And you said we could not use that um, uh, the art grant for stormwater and drainage. Is that correct? Um, the American Rescue Plan. Yes. Right. So that is infrastructure for water and wastewater, I believe. I'd have to look in. I'd have to look and see. Um, stormwater may be included, but I believe it's water, wastewater, and broadband are okay. the three major things they're looking for. Okay. I'm not opposed to it. Um, it's just be something to keep in mind whenever yeah. we come back for our actual writing these checks. And absolutely. I'm, I'm, having a little trouble. I'm having a little trouble hearing Council Member Bernard. What was to add 200 uh, to storm? I'm to speak up. I said that maybe we should go ahead and double the stormwater drainage for a year to 200,000. Okay, thank is you. It, is anyone on the council opposed to that? Not seeing any others. Okay. Any more questions, comments? No. No, nope, go ahead. Okay, slide number eight is the community center. Um, last year we didn't spend any money. I believe I'm going to throw this back at Mark. Um, he was talking about the roof. We may need to replace the clay roof. Well, what can be hard here? About two weeks ago, I was informed that there was a leak at the community center roof, and I said, wow, I've been here a year and a half, never heard of that. Mike Stone said there's been a leak since he's been here. He's been here how much longer than he has? Good. Almost three years. Has, has any contractors been called to try to... So, I got a hold of um, his boss. They went out there, went up on the, got on the lift, went up and looked at it, had a contract, I think it was Stewart. He said the whole roof needs to be replaced. Danielle told me that the west side was replaced, but when we looked in the west side, yeah, that's the left side, the west side, look at it, left. It wasn't replaced, it was just patched. It was only 10,000, so we moved. And anyways, the uh, contractor said he's probably looking Again, ballpark around 250,000 because he thinks that the barrel roof needs to replace and then the flat itself. So that's just the number we put in there for now. Whether it's that much or not, not sure. That's what he threw out. Okay. Well, that's definitely something that we need to examine pretty closely. I think, you know, there's a lot of other options out there than, than that. So maybe we should get some other contractors to take a look at it, give estimates. Do you have any idea how old that roof is? No, probably the original roof that was thrown to the But I definitely know we need to make sure we look at it, get something done because we don't have to know that the pop will have to do with uh, the brick building. Other than the other buildings, just sat on them and then all of a sudden they'll all start leaking at once. So the community center is you know, 
prior to the city get some other people to look at. Well, we'll have to put it out for a bid. Yeah, no, the question is, you know, you have to put out what you're going to get on. Yeah. That, that's kind of where you probably need some assistance. Okay. That's true. Next okay. slide, Kelly. Yeah, so the next few slides are going to um, pertain to the CRA. Um, as you are aware, the CRA is um, associated with the millage. Um, and for the sake of this budget, the millage is based on a rate of 2.24. Um, I just put some information in here about each one of the uh, CRA areas, and I'm sure you all know where they are, but um, I was kind of familiarizing my own self with that. Um, for the end of 2021, it's projected that we'll have 584,000 in the Main Street CRA. The estimated revenues are around 291,000. Um, we had a meeting with the advisory board um, regarding the budget, and I think they're looking at uh, maybe taking the CRAs in a in a different direction. Um, instead of just relying on people coming forward and uh, you know requesting facade grants, they may wanna delve in a little bit deeper and see exactly what it can be used for. You know, excuse me, but I agree with that. I mean, when you think about how much money we have left over every year, and it seems like maybe either some homeowners aren't aware of it or they're financially not able to do it, or maybe even have other issues and other than just the facade, if we have the money there and we all try to utilize it to improve all the areas of the, of the city. And so I like the idea that you said the CRA is looking into that. And uh, I, I agree with that. We need to find a way to, uh, to actually use the funds to improve the look of the city, you know, in all areas. So tell them I said kudos for that. I think. Um, we are going to probably rely heavily on our city attorney for the what uses we can actually uh, spend these funds on. Okay, you will have a wealth of opinions, I'm sure. Oh, yes. On the um, south side, um, when I look at the, uh, the budget in here, the, when there was no grant and, um, utilized mm -hmm. for the south side, and I can almost imagine the reasoning why is that folks just don't have that additional funds to add with it in the home ownership level. Uh, as far as like the um, uh, businesses, we pay 100% of the business um, grants when they come in and ask for funds. Um, we should. But when the South Side, when the homeowners come in, and I can only speak for the South Side, and they apply for a grant or they consider applying for a grant. And then we tell them we're going to pay $1,500 of a $2,000 project that needs to be done. That shines them away. Even though the project still needs to be done, they just don't have the funds. So I, I, I think we, in the, in the process of them looking at other avenues, that would probably be one I would suggest that the CRA look at. The did they change the application? Yeah, homeowners are 100% up to $2,000. And then um, starting October 1st, the homeowners will have up to 100% up to $3,000. Yeah. But businesses get $5,000. Yes, ma'am. So I don't see the difference in And I think it should be reconsidered to match the businesses. If you if you ask Jerry, you'll, up to it. you'll hear that the purpose of the CRA was for the business districts. Excuse me. Business, business. If you ask Jerry Beer, then he'll come back and say that the purpose of the CRA is for the business districts. But we used it for eliminating slum and blight throughout the area. I know we have. Area. And we, we can have. also make that adjustment. Even though I know he says that um negative way. But nine times out of ten, when you're asking him, uh, can it be used for this? Then the answer is no. Mm -hmm. But then we'll come around and still find a way of doing it. Mm -hmm. So I just that was just a suggestion and observation. Mm -hmm. Sure. 
from our meeting. We had a very good meeting the other night. And actually, what was on the agenda, it will be on your agenda a week from Monday when we had the CRA. That's my I was going to bring it up. But I got an email. Um, actually, it was um, excuse me, through Council Member Sutherland and, and Casey Wall. And, and Maria said, hey, get with Mark and get it in front of them. And where the uh, the uh, CRA advisory board, you know, they say, hey, what we're doing isn't working. We got all this money, we're up to spend it trying to make Avon Park a better place. And as I pointed out to them, all they're talking about basically is Main Street. You know, they sometimes forget they're all three of them. But what um, Casey Wallhart, we had her on here with Joe Lamp from Airstream Ventures. He was here once, that's who the, the county um, brought in. But what they, that Spartan race, the Tough Mudder that's going to be in Lake Placid, well, the day before it is going to be our jingle run to 5K. And the TDC is paying like $90,000 for the event. And they were asking the CRA if it's allowable, could, would um, throw in 7500 for basically marketing and advertising of Avon Park to get people up here and you know, so everybody sees Avon Park. And then that um, jet ski race that they want to alternate um, over the next few years between Lake Jackson and Lake Verona. They're looking to have actually CBS Sports TV coverage is going to be here. And out of everything they cover, they're going to have like a 30 minute show the next day. And um, they were looking at $10,000 to help pay for the TV coverage. And out of that, Avon Park gets 60, 90 seconds showing what Avon Park's about and trying to bring in. Tour of the mess where all this started the other night. And actually, they had made a motion that they wanted $100,000 put in line item for if it's allowable. Because um, I'm still confused sometimes what's allowable, what isn't. And sometimes, as we know, Jerry say isn't, and get voted over anyways. But um, they thought that was a great idea for that and any future one just to bring people to Avon Park and advertise Avon Park. So that's where it all came from, or most of it came from. Uh, and they said, you know, we look out in the audience, there's nobody here for the facade grants. We would like to spend this money to try to put Avon Park basically on the map to get some events up here in that. So, but we will bring that to you in the next um, CRA board meeting. Okay. Anything else for 14? Are there any questions on any of the CRA? I think that brings us to the end. We have the airport CRA, um, but I'm not sure um, what's going on with that based on the, the lease. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm not really sure where. Any questions on the airport CRA? Uh, any other questions or anything else to bring up about the uh, budget? Not at this time. So our next uh, meeting that we're going to have will be at our next council meeting tonight on Monday, right? Correct, 4 o'clock. What are the uh, the funds that will be covered there? Do you know yet? Water and waste. Okay. Hey, Melly, when did you, you were going to do water, wastewater? Um, and then the sanitation the week after that? Or do you think we can that'll be, I'm sorry, that'll all be included. Hopefully I will get to all of that. Um, at the next meeting. Okay. Any questions? Anything else for the good of the city? Is our, our next meeting is twenty third. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you, you'll have a um, a special meeting at yeah. the CRA, and well, then right now <laughs> there's a lot for the regular meeting. So. Okay. We don't have a early four o'clock budget meeting. And the CRA and then the city council. Bring a sleeping bag. To bring a lunch or dinner or something. Okay. Hey, Melody, how long do you think that the budget one will last? Um, it depends on you know how deep we get into it. Um, I think that if we concentrate on um, you know some of the, not necessarily all of the minutia with each line item, but you know if we concentrate on. Um, uh, capital expenditures and that kind of thing, we might push it along a little bit farther. 
quicker. I think it'll be enough. Anything else for good city? Seeing no, I entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Seeing no opposition, we are adjourned.